Move on to the other important topic, other important labels. That are the causes for the metabolic acidosis with compensation. The patient has a metabolic acidosis and he is compensating, that is a hyperventilating. Which are those conditions? Yes. So before starting this, this is a, actually a second part of this video um, on uh, anion gap, that is uh, acidosis and alkalosis. In the first part, we explained how you need to do, uh, how you need to check a pH of a patient um, through this uh, acido, uh, if the patient is suffering from respiratory acidosis or metabolic acidosis with compensation. Okay, so right now we are discussing about the metabolic acidosis with compensation. So let's take a part in this. The patient has a metabolic acidosis, metabolic acidosis with compensation with compensation so now the condition is hyperventilation so we divide whether the anion gap AG okay the AG the AG is more or a normal this is really very important okay whether the AG, that's the anion gap, is more, is increased, or is a normal. What's the normal level? It's 8 to 12. Okay? 8 to 12. This is a normal. Remember. So if it's a more than 12, we can put this into this chart. And if it's less than 12 or 8 to 12, then we can put it over here. So now let's see which are those conditions where you see increased anion gap. So now tell me the conditions where you see. There's a beautiful mnemonic for that. That's mud piles. Okay. So now let's start what some mud piles are. Remember this is very important for you assembly step one. We go with the methanol. Okay, methanol. Now we go with uremia. Okay. D diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. Then we have propylene glycol. Propylene glycol. Okay. Iron tablets or iron. INH iron tablets iron okay if the patient is taking iron tablets or INH drug right so now the important is L for lactic acidosis lactic acidosis E for ethanol sorry ethylene glycol okay Oxalic acid is also known as, and the yes is for salicylates. Salicylates, okay, guys. So remember this increase anion gap in a patient with a metabolic acidosis with compensation, where you find the pH is less than seven point four, but the PCO two is less than forty. Okay, so these are the conditions where you see this is a beautiful mnemonic. Remember this, memorize this one. Really, really important. Increase AG is in the mud pies, that is a methanol, uremia, DKA, that is a diabetic ketoacidosis, propylene glycol, iron therapy or INH therapy, lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol or salicylate. Okay, so let's move on to the next that's a metabolic acidosis patients with the normal AG, that's anion gap. Okay, guys. There's a bad mnemonic for that. I don't want to take, okay? Just let me make sure you understand better. Okay? So, first one, the conditions where you see are hyper alimentation, hyper alimentation. Okay, then you have 
Addison's disease. Addison's disease. Then renal tubular acidosis, RTA, diarrhea. Just you make a mnemonic from the first letter of the each word, and that's gonna be very crazy. Then diarrhea. Then we have acetazolamide. Spironolactone Then we have saline infusion Saline Okay guys, so remember the important points over here I don't want to use the blue one, that's a crazy going Remember the causes, Addison's disease very important RT is very important, diarrhea is very important, diarrhea is really very important on you you will be asked on that and sperm lactone, okay, and hyperventilation. So remember in these order definitely and I make a mnemonic for this and definitely will get something crazy. Mnemonic, I don't wanna talk about that. Ding, ding, tsh, 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 tsh. Okay guys, so let's move on to the next thing that the pH of the patient is more than if the pH is more than 7.4. Oh my god. Then the patient is suffering from alkalosis, alkalemia, right, right, so patient might be suffering from alkalemia, so now again the second step, remember the first step what we look at, the if the patient, if the first, need, first thing what you need to do is whenever you want to say whether the patient is acidotic or alkalotic, what you need to do, check for the pH and pH gonna decide the status of the patient then the next best step would be checking PCO2 level then goes bicarbonate okay guys now the PCO2 is less than 40 or more than 40 right less than 40 or more than 40 millimeter of mercury now the patient is alkalotic whether it's a respiratory or whether it's a metabolic we need to decide okay if the pco2 is less than 40 it means it's a respiratory alkalosis right respiratory alkalosis because lowering the pco2 level causes increase in the ph so this might be the cause for his alkalemia so the patient might be suffering from respiratory alkalosis now look at this if the pH uh, PCO2 is more than 40 means the pH is low okay yeah, sorry pH is more pH is more but the PCO2 that's a respiratory component this carbon dioxide is more than 40 whereas more than 40 causes acidemia right but the pH is low, pH is alkalotic. So, in which condition you will get this situation? Right, that's a metabolic alkalosis. We need to name the patient as alkalotic. Huh? Now we call it as a, because this PCO2 level, more increase in the PCO2 level doesn't suit the patient's pH level. That's why we call it as a metabolic alkalosis. So, metabolic alkalosis. Then, PCO2 level are more than we call it as a compensation with compensation right with compensation this is the condition in the next other videos I'm gonna ask you a few questions on that make you perfect how to answer wisely different situations okay critical mixed respiratory acidosis mixed respiratory alkalosis blah 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 there's so many things you need to know okay guys so let's take on the conditions pH is more than 7.4 PCO2 is less than 40. That's a respiratory alkalosis. Where do you see respiratory alkalosis? Means the patient is hyperventilating, right? If the patient is hyperventilating, then we can call it as a early high altitude exposure and a salicylates. Early 
high altitude exposure okay guys very important now look at the next one that could be a salicylate salicylate right right good there are two causes for that now the if the pH is more than 7.4 that's alkalosis and the PCO2 is more than 40 that's nothing but metabolic alkalosis with compensation right so now the conditions can you name the conditions where you see this kind of blood levels okay I will tell you the most important thing you should remember is a loop diuretics diuretics okay very important and the second important thing is if the patient is throwing up that's vomiting okay then we have antacid use antacid use and the other important thing is hyperaldosteronism Okay, guys so these are the important things if the patient has a pH of more than 7.4 and um, what do you call uh, PCO2 this is a PCO2 is uh, less than uh, more than 40 then it's a metabolic acid alkalosis with a compensation okay so now the conditions where you see this kind of uh, blood levels are a loop diuretics if the patient is on a loop diuretics is a patient on is a vomiting continuously or antacid, uh, antacid use or hyperaldosteronism so these are the guys this is a really very basic idea about this um, um, what do you call um, whether the patient is uh, acidotic or alkalosis let me summarize the how you should approach with a patient with uh, acidotic alkalosis first check for pH very good what you need to do look for the 7.4 levels if it's a less than or more than that okay less than or more than that let's take a less than 7.4 or less than 7.4 or more than 7.4 right so if it's a less than 7.4 it's acidem acidemia then look for PCO2 PCO2 whether it's more than 40 that's respiratory or less than 40 that could be a metabolic acidosis with compensation and if it's more same thing you need to do PCO2 look at the PCO2 whether it's less than 40 or more than 40 if it's less than 40 with a pH more than 7.4 it's respiratory alkalosis and if it's more than 40 with a pH more than 7.4 then it's a metabolic acidosis with compensation that's a hyperventilation hyperventilation okay guys so thank you so much for concentrating on this video and thank you so much for being patient and listening to our videos and please guys do subscribe to our channel if you like our video thumb up and please do share our videos with your friends thank you so